Hello everyone, my name is Mohammed Azmal, I'm the founding engineer of iMesh and in this session we'll have a look at TLS with Kubernetes Gateway API. Now we have discussed Kubernetes Gateway API in depth in a lot of other videos and webinars, you can find them in this channel and we have already explored what are the capabilities of the Gateway API, how it is better than the traditional ingress and all those things, how it supports multiple controllers and XYZ everything. So in this session, we'll be looking into the TLS uh, and how to do uh, TLS with the Gateway API. So uh, this is the uh, uh, example that we'll be building. So the architecture is here. You can see that we are deploying a gateway and we are having two listeners attached to it. One being the HTTPS listener and another is the HTTP listener. So we'll be adding a specific HTTP route. We'll also look at how to add routes to only specific listeners. So you might want to expose few routes, say maybe in the HTTP uh, protocol, but uh, you might need some route to be under HTTPS. So that also we'll be having a look at here. And uh, for simplicity, both these routes will end up in the same service. Uh, that is the echo service that we'll be deploying. It's a very simple diagram. And we'll also be using cert manager to uh, manage the certificate and uh, have it auto renew and all those things we'll be taking a look at in this session. So let's jump into the code. As you can see, there are few prerequisites. So uh, you need to have uh, the Kubernetes Gateway API CRDs installed and Istio or any other controller that uh, the Gateway API supports installed with it. So we have already discussed about it in uh, our previous session. Do check it out. And you will be needing Cert Manager and for Cert Manager to work with the Gateway API because uh, uh, this is the new addition into the Kubernetes ecosystem. So you need to have the feature gates experimental gateways API support as true into the cert manager controller arcs. So I'll be showing you uh, the uh, code right here. So this is the cert manager code. It is taken from their GitHub. So uh, this is the same installation code is here. But the only thing you need to take care is in the maybe somewhere down there. Okay, I'll, I'll just find this property. You can see in the containers for cert manager controller, in the arguments, we are adding this uh, feature gates experimental gateway API support as true. It is required for the cert manager to work with the gateway API. And uh, hopefully in future, they'll add it uh, in by default. So you don't have to worry about adding this particular uh, features gates argument. If you have already installed cert manager into your cluster, you can simply uh, update its configuration and add this thing into the arguments. That's also well and good. That's also fine. So, and uh, let's have a look at the application first. So this is going to be our uh, application. It's a very simple application. It's just one echo server, uh, which is running in this particular namespace, the TLS GW API namespace, exposing port 80. This is the service. And in deployment, we are using an echo server app, which is hosted in the iMesh AI's uh, Docker Hub. You can find it there as well. Very simple application, nothing fancy here, just the labels, version, everything standard. And we also have a namespace file to create the namespace. So you can use this file to create namespace or you can create your namespace on your own. So let's apply this. I already have the applications and all running. Apply dash F. Yeah. So the services were already deployed, so it's unchanged, so it's working. And uh, after the application, we'll also have a look at the Gateway API specification. But before jumping in right there, I'll, I'll be showing you how to install the Cert Manager and along with it, how to install uh, the cluster uh, production issuer and staging issuers and all those things we'll be looking at. So first, you need to apply this YAML file, uh, the Cert Manager one. So what I did, I simply copied it from their GitHub repository and added that uh, the uh, this flag into the args and I'm going to apply this file. So, okay, and it's going to take some time to apply. And uh, once it is applied, the cert manager will be up and running. So you can see all the pods and all will be coming up. So uh, let it apply. And we'll also have a look at the staging issuer. So uh, in this case, you can use namespace based issuers. That's absolutely fine. For the simplicity, I'm going to use the cluster issuer. And this is the staging issuer. So as you can see, we have uh, given the server for the staging one. We are also specifying what is the secret ref for the private key. In this case, it's staging cluster issuer. And uh, this is the crucial part. 
so we will be using the http challenge for the certificates to auto renew and uh, uh, you know essentially be automatically renewed in the cluster so we'll be using the new addition which is the gateway http route and inside this in parent self we are going to provide the name of the gateway and where it is located so that uh, the solver uses essentially that gateway to uh, kind of renew its certificates and do all the, uh, solve the http challenge the same thing uh, with the prod cluster the only difference here is that i'm having a different secret ref name for the private key and the url is different in this case so in this example you can uh, see that we are having two uh, issuers here however we'll, i'll be showing you the example using the production cluster issuer directly but it is always advisable for you to use the staging cluster first and test everything if it's working fine and then only move ahead and use the production one okay so i hope the cert manager is applied let's see oops cert manager all the workloads and everything is running perfectly yeah we can also apply the issuer my bad so in this case i'm applying the prod uh, issuer okay it's configured we will get cluster issuers okay so we have the prod one i had deployed staging one as well previously uh, let's describe this can see everything is working fine everything is configured it's uh, the gateway configuration and everything is also present it is registered with the acme server account register status is true uh, ready state all those things everything is working fine now uh, that's the only thing you need from the certificate side of things the or the issuer would be more than enough to do all the things and the reason the advantage you're having with this is that you don't have to deploy any other uh, uh like a certificate crd or anything because we are simply using the gateway for the solver and all in the gateway api when we are creating the gateway we'll be specifying the name of the secret and all those things so that the certificate is generated automatically so let's have a look at the gateway api uh, i mean the gateway crd my bad so in this case you can see it's a standard gateway crd we have given it a name and to in which namespace we want this gateway to be located at and one thing to keep in mind that you need to have the cert manager.io cluster issuer or in your case if you are using the namespace issuer accordingly you will be having those annotations so in this case i'm adding the cluster issuer annotation and i'm using the prod cluster issuer okay and uh, these two are just for the probe rule in uh, azure it's not necessary that you will be needing this but this in, uh, annotation is very much important for uh, you to uh, have a working certificate uh, managed thing and in the gateway class name, we'll be using Istio, which is already installed. And in listeners, we have two listeners. So we have the HTTPS listener and the HTTP listener. And you might argue that, okay, I can, uh, if I only need the HTTPS everywhere, why, why can't I simply have one listener? You need to have a HTTP listener as well, because uh, you want the certificates to solve that, uh, the cert manager to solve the HTTP challenge, right? So it's it's not going to work if you have just the HTTPS route. It needs the HTTP route to solve that challenge first, so that your certificates will be generated. So that's why we need that route. However, in that route, I have given the host name as anything from IMH.ai, and uh, the protocol is 80. Uh, sorry, port is 80. Protocol HTTP, and allowed routes. I'm allowing routes from all namespaces. Mind you that the name of this particular listener is just HTTP listener. Now similarly we have the https listener and the host name we are using here in this case is test.imesh.ai okay and the protocol is https port is 443 now this is the important part in the tls section you need to specify the certificate reference basically where you want to store the certificate and all those things so since we are using cert manager and we have already annotated this particular gateway with the specific issuer so once you add this TLS configuration, the cert manager would generate the certificate itself. So you can see the, I have also set the mode as terminate. So in this case, it will be terminate. Uh, it's by default terminate. You uh, uh, for, for the TLS one, we need it to be in mode terminate. 
and the, in the certificates ref you will be giving properties like what is the name of the certificate if you want to have it in a different namespace you can also provide the namespace however i want it in the same namespace so i'm i'm not providing anything by default it will take the namespace of wherever this gateway is getting deployed so and the name of the certificate is test ims cert okay let's apply the gateway okay gateway is configured now let's see what all things we have in the TLS GW API namespace. Okay, we have the gateway as well, gateway running. We have the echo server deployment and we have the Kubernetes. Uh, this is basically the gateway that you were, uh, uh, that we were using. This is the one and everything is working fine. Now let's describe the gateway. and uh, TLS GW API all I want to see is that uh, the certificates are there yeah resolved refs so refs are getting resolved certificates and everything it is accepted and you can also if you do uh, get gateway you'll see that uh, this sorry I need to specify the namespace as well here you can see that it's having its own IP address and all and it's programmed true so its status is ready so this is all about the gateway part now we also need the http routes uh, to take the request to the specific services now let's begin with the insecure route now as we had discussed in the diagram itself we want the insecure route or in this case i have named it as an insecure http route to identify it to just the http listener now how do i do that so first of all uh, uh, the crd is uh, whatever i'm using we have already covered it in our previous videos in depth so make sure to check it out so uh, this is pretty simple we have the http route crd i've given it a name as insecure http route i'm deploying it in the same namespace where i have the gateway so now in the specification since we need to specify which gateway it is going to attach to and in this case we want it to attach to this particular gateway so i'm giving the name of the gateway which is kt's gateway and in this case i don't need to provide the namespace here because both of them are residing in the same namespace however if they are in a different namespace you can provide the namespace here it is important you provide namespace if they are in a different namespaces one more thing that i'm going to provide is also the section name now this is important because if i don't provide the section name this route is going to be attached to all the listeners that are listed here so we have two listeners here one for http which we have given a name of http listener and an https one which i have given the name of https listener since the insecure route we want to add only to the http listener that i'm going to provide the section name of http listener this way it's only going to attach to the http listeners uh, this particular listener and not the other one and uh, the match uh, the uh, rule specification is very simple we have a matches where i'm specifying the slash path basically to whatever incoming request is coming in path slash it's going to match it and it's going to forward it to this particular backend ref of echo service port 80 these filter chain i'm using simply to inject few headers in both the request and response so we can see that it's coming uh, the header injection is also there and it is coming from the http insecure route so we know from which route it is being routed and what is the uh, uh, from where the application is being hit so this is about the insecure route the same thing we have for the secure route we are giving it a parents ref and in this case the name which we are using is the https listener instead of the http listener one and however this name is also different uh, i have given it a name of secure http route and then in the injected headers i have given the protocol value to be https secure so we know it's coming from this particular route only both of them are routing the uh, request to the same service so no changes in the backend route. so let's quickly apply these routes Yeah. you can see both the routes are here even you can provide the host name in the secure http route however in this case i'm uh, skipping that it's optional since we have already provided the host name in inside of the 
gateway any request coming would be routed directly to this route yeah uh, if you want to have multiple https listeners so i'm having one for test.imh.ai you and i want to have another maybe for test2.imh.ai and i want another http route to handle the test2 part so there i'll be specifying the host name so it only acts upon uh, the route which is having the host name of test2 or test so in this case i'm i'm just not applying it for uh, so you can apply that you can keep that in mind and uh, let's just uh, describe uh, one of the http route Yeah, everything is working. All references are resolved. It is accepted. Route was valid. And uh, if we describe the gateway as well, you can see uh, one attached route for this particular subset that is the HTTPS one, and one has been attached for the HTTP one. If I go up, you can see for the allowed namespace star. Yeah, here it is there. Attached route for HTTP one. Okay. So now we have applied everything. Now let's have a look at the certificate as well. Okay, you can see this certificate was generated. And uh, if we describe the certificate, and you can see that the name of the certificate is what we had specified in the gateways uh, certificates ref reference. Yeah, cert manager is up to date, certificate is up to date, has not expired, everything is looking fine. Now let's go to our browser and uh, first try with the HTTP route, the insecure one. Okay. And here you can see if I zoom in, we are having the protocol as HTTP insecure. It means that it is coming from the insecure route. Okay. Similarly, we have uh, the HTTPS one, I think this is the request headers and uh, yeah, so it's properly adding the header as well. You can see the host name here is a test.ims.ai, everything is working fine. Now let's, and this is not secure because we have just used HTTP one. So let's copy it over and use the secure one. Okay. Now you can see it is being uh, sent to us by the HTTPS secure protocol is HTTPS secure which is coming from this secure HTTP route. Okay, both of them are using the same gateway. And if I go here, you can see that the certificate is secure. Certificate is valid. I'm getting all the information here. It's from test image dot image dot AI from let's encrypt and all those things we are having the certificate private and public key other details and parts of it are also available. here. So uh, yes, this is how uh, you do TLS with the gateway API. And I hope it was clear. So uh, thank you very much. If you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment and uh, definitely reach out to us. If you have any other confusion, this is our email. So thank you very much. Have a good day.